Tsunami Studios. Raya and the Last Dragon. This is the latest venture from Disney Animation and the latest venture to go directly to streaming because this was going to be theatrically released, but the world sucks. So here it is. <laughs> um, I thoroughly enjoyed this. Now, I just watched it. I watched it the other day. I don't want to say it is the best animated movie Disney's ever made or it's like the best looking because I think you could go back and compare it to something like Moana or Frozen 2 and it has that feel to it like this modern aesthetic that we are doing for our animated projects that looks hyper realistic in the backgrounds and the scenery it has a very compelling story it feels very modern in that aspect but I don't know if it's one of my favorite Disney movies which I, I mean it, over time I could see it becoming that because I think this premise is very compelling and very cool and it's going to give you a really interesting idea about the world and make you think about things in our own society more so than we saw in some other stuff there's a big message in this film and it's not one i want to spend a lot of time on talking about but there's a message in this that's just clearly just clearly saying we need to unite to let things grow and heal and move over time like as a society as a world we have to come together to make things the place it used to be you know kind of like how that yesteryear feel can never truly exist because we're all fighting each other that's kind of the theme of the movie which i get it like that's a strong theme to base your like premise on and it worked for the most part i really liked it but then you go to like a self asian style feeling where everything's kind of this like old school fighting style and it's got like bizarre cool weapons and you're in, like this really interesting place of diverse characters and casts and these different things it's really cool now i think compared to like a lot of other disney properties for some reason this one feels very fantasy like just like the premise alone has this really interesting element of like bizarre weapons creatures that don't really exist but this underlying theme of like a classic kung fu movie which is it's weird to say kung fu because i know this is not like the genre or the homage it's going for but it just gave me vibes of something just like a kung fu movie where it's like here are like the rival tribes they're coming together they're feuding they're going after this one entity that could control the world give you like prosperity and wealth and then when it shatters the world's divided into five places and there's no more dragons it's got that vibe and i think that was a really fun vibe to see it just had a very distinctive feel to it that we haven't seen in a disney property before this is a weird comparison but this is the most mad max disney's ever gotten in terms of their animated properties very weird to say i know but it felt like it, it had like echelons of that where it's like we're in the desert we're doing our things on our machines it's cool it's very cool it just felt so different when i'm watching this i'm like this is a disney movie like this feels like an adult animated show where like the characters are feuding it's like giant war it, it had a lot a lot of avatar the last airbender vibes which doesn't surprise me i'm pretty sure we're going for like that's that same aesthetic and that same continent or country like feeling which worked because that's exactly what it should be i like that a lot and the lead character of Raya herself, I thought was a very good lead. You see her really trying to figure herself out while she's still having fun along the way. She still feels like a Disney character, and I really enjoyed seeing that. And you guys know I'm a huge fan and supporter of Kelly Marie Tran. I'm so happy she got this role. I'm so happy she got an opportunity to work with Disney again and then just do something where people won't yell at her or make her feel bad about doing a great job whatever film she's in. I love The Last Jedi. I like Rose Tico. Y'all really made me just really happy for Kelly Marie Tran to have this moment. To be a Disney princess. She has become a Disney princess and it feels very cool. She's one of my favorite people working today. I just thought she did a really good job in that role. Same with Aquafina as Sisu. I understand not a lot of people are fans of Aquafina, but I have enjoyed every project she's been in, and she's been a large part of that. I thought she just had a very compelling presence. Her as the dragon in this, I see how some people could be like, oh, I get it, but come on, it's Aquafina as a dragon. What's not to like? She made it come to life. She made it feel realistic and cool, have like some distinctive personality that only Aquafina could distill into that character. It's very fun. And it, it just added that extra layer of like the world grow, growing and just like everything like that. It worked really cool. I liked her a lot. And for some reason, I really enjoyed her human form. I know that's kind of like a spoiler to say, but the, the dragon as the human, I thought it looked really cool and distinctive too. Somehow very Aquafina as well, which was really great to see. Gemma Chan as the villain. Very good. I really like her. I like Gemma Chan. You got three of my favorite people working today. 
doing something in this. That's very exciting. I enjoy that aspect of it a lot. And like I said at the beginning, man, the just the CGI, like the, the devs we could go to in our animation now, just making like certain stone look like actual stone and the water look like actual water and the way it like drips down and the way the hair looks when it's wet or like the way the dust clears when you're like a desert like all of that just looks incredible and poignant and such a great realistic feeling that it's hard to capture sometimes we really made it work here i'm very very impressed with that it's a great fun time the characters are cool. All the side characters work really well for what they're trying to do. I enjoyed that aspect of it too. Benedict Wong's in it. He's great. I mean, have you ever like hated a, a role of Benedict Wong in it? If you have, what's wrong with you? He's fantastic. Everything in this worked really well. Like the the the, the reason the characters are fighting, I get it. This idea kind of like in this Black Panther idea, like we have this technology that can potentially unite the world and bring us all together, but we have to think about our own people over the regards of others. That's very cool, and it's only, it's only, I say this harshly because I, this probably took years to make, it's only a concept that could work once Black Panther came out, but I'm sure these were being operated and made around the same time, which made sense. I thought that was very cool. I really like Raya. She's a really compelling lead, and her world was very fun. It feels very old school kung fu, like ninja feeling, which I, again, not the time period or like the place they were going for. It's not like Mulan in that aspect where it's like samurais and doing all that, but this was just very fun. The action looked great. There's a lot of action in this, and it was very clean, very crisp. Everything about this movie felt really cool and worked really well. I just can't believe we got this. It was just nice that this is the one that came to Disney+. Plus. I'm okay with that. I think this is going to get a lot more eyes on it now. It's going to make people go, Oh yeah, I got some time to kill and watch this. It's definitely worth your time, I would say. It's fun. And that's something I like seeing in Disney. It's fun, it's funny, it's got the heart that you'd expect it to have for a Disney property, and it's adding to the ever-expansive lore of the Disney princesses, which I like to see as well. Just a lot of fun characters that could potentially get a follow-up sequel, because we definitely could do some more stuff with this. The Drakens all looked really cool too. Like, I was kind of like, how are they going to do this? Is it going to be more like Falcor? Nah, they have a very distinct thing about them. Those dragons, which I liked seeing. The story is just really good. I think a lot of people are going to be surprised by this one. And if you're not, I completely get that. Like, there's a lot of familiar beats in here. But it plays out in a really cool way that's going to make a lot of people impressed. If you are hesitant to watch this, I recommend it solely for the action. Solely for, like, the characters. You're going to really enjoy it. I think it's a surprise hit. Surprisingly fun time. It's not over the top. It's not something like Frozen 2 where you're going to be like, Oh, so this is going to end? Or is like, this really what we're doing? You're gonna be you're gonna be on the edge of your seat with a lot of the scenes they go to and a lot of the fight styles, which is really fun. So Raya and the Last Dragon, I am going to give a seven out of ten. Now thank you guys so much for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, all that good stuff, and I will catch you in the next one. Have fun, stay safe. Good luck.